Advisor. You are obsessed with her. I mean, yes. completely. Yes. Some of us have been watching King Tiger or Tiger Gang, whatever. Michelle hasn't. She's been watching the seven seasons of Scandal. I'm not done. I'm seven. Not season five. We're five seasons in. There's 21 episodes per season. 22 on some of them. And um, yes, so, yeah. She, Scandal. Yes. Olivia Pope would be an advisor. Would you say? Would you so, Olivia, so Olivia Pope is a star of Scandal. Scandal is all about, there's a person, like I'm telling you, like you don't know, like I had no idea about this show, but it's a really good show. And Olivia Pope is a star, Kerry Washington plays her. Um, this is going to hurt your feelings, but Olivia Pope's not, she's not real. She's, no, I know, it's not, not real. Mm -hmm. Kerry Washington plays her. She's a fixer. There's a problem. She swoops into action. She dispassionately analyzes what's going on. And then she comes up with a solution. And that's what advisors, yeah, she's the quintessence of advisor. If you haven't watched Scandal, you should check it out. Cause she is, she, she is it to a T. You, you get experts in, you see what the facts are. You, you don't let any sacred cows or pre-existing uh, power structures distract you from looking at the thing as it actually is. She's a free thinker. She looks at the way that it actually is and then she makes a decision. And that is the quintessence of, of advisor. At, at, their very, at your very, if you're an advisor, at your very best. Here's what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna do this. Second, we're gonna do this. Yes. First, we're gonna do this, then we're gonna do this. Then, by the way, they have a screen, right? Remember those, those, those kind of cool windows. windows where they put all the pictures of the suspects yes. and so on? So it's not a frivolous. No, no, no. De detail oriented, um, expert oriented, um, dispassionate, um, not weighed down by theory and concept. If you have to believe that the Iranian ambassador is in fact the person responsible for such and such, then, then you allow yourself to believe or see what is in front of your eyes, even if all the existing kind of um, theory and concepts say that that's not real. You look at the thing as it actually is, and then the question that every single advisor, every single advisor in a sense is thinking, if you're married to an advisor, you should know this, um, they're thinking, what is the best thing to do? What is the most effective thing to do? Which can be, as President, what's his, uh, Fitz, 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 President Fitz, as, <laughs> as President Grant. Fitzgerald Grant, uh, Tony Goldwyn, uh, what he, he sometimes gets annoyed by this because she is willing to um, sort of let go of any loyalties or any pre-existing relationships in order to make a decision that will yield to the best outcome. And, and advisors are like this. They don't really hold on to anything that's sacred. I know, because, you know, I've got some people in my life who, who used to be advisors, or are advisors, and I'm the sort of person who, once you've figured out, like, once you've figured out how to uh, plan a trip to Mexico City, for me, by the way, that's quite a tricky thing to do. So once I've planned it, I cling on to that. I don't want to be boarding a plane while the advisors turn to me and go, you know what, there's a better way, there's a better way, there's always a better way to get to Mexico City. That's just super frustrating for me because I'm like, I, we've already got one. But advisors are like, you know what, there's always potentially a better way. But don't they always have a plan? Like, I feel like they're not, that feels a little, that doesn't feel advisory to me because they're on a plane making a decision. They've thought through that decision, they've tested that, that solution, they, uh, they already know and go into the situation knowing that... Yes, so there is... They understand the power of deciding what you're going to do based upon all available information. But the great thing about advisors, if you want one, is that they're always open for new information. Expert information? Yes, it's what the whole bloody show is. Yes. Uh, a scandal. Yeah. You start off and you go, she's analyzed the problem, and then you go, oh, this is what the solution is. And then we're like three quarters of the way yeah, in, new information in. comes in, you realize, oh my word, 
he Death was cut out of the will. And that's why it is this, like right there, right? So they're not set in their ways. No, they're not set in their ways and they're not set in their understandings. If you're an advisor, what's amazing about you is no new information uh, throws you. New information is actually just looked at dispassionately along with everything else. And then you just add it into your mix. And then you go, now we're gonna, there's no problem turning right. That's again, the good thing about Olivia is like, well, we're gonna go left. And then for half the show, we're going to go, then new information, and we're going to go right. And she's just, she's like, I don't, like if you're an advisor, you don't, you're not defensive. You watch that show. She is never, def if somebody comes in with new information that undermines what she thought, she's just like, mm. oh, now we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. I, if you're an advisor, you don't even know how powerful that is. Mm. So many of us, me included, probably, by the way, we get defensive if some new piece of information undermines our point of view or shows that we're wrong or and advisors just don't it's so beautiful it's like a c button on the calculator that makes all the numbers go away and now it's a new calculation mm -hmm. it's kind of cool mm -hmm. um what's so interesting to me is that she feels i'm using her because it's fun and i'm obsessed right. she feels alive when she's tackling a problem like that is her world and this last season when season five right she's like all of a sudden she's got it all she's got the person she wants she's got and we all would point to that life and go oh my god you're first lady ish you've got everything you settle need. down yes pick out the pottery and things are perfect and she can't stand so, it because there's nothing yeah. to solve so well and that's one of the things that's about all of these strengths roles is to some extent we're trying to figure out where you get your energy from where you get your power from and the thing about advisors if you are one is you get your power from problems i'm not saying you necessarily problematize Although some advisors might, if it was run amok, you just create problems where there aren't any, just so that you can swing in and do it. But good old Olivia Pope is, 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 is not herself while she is sitting quietly in a room. Or she's only herself when she's got a client with a huge problem and she's got to go, what do I the do? The bigger the problem, the better. Yes, mm -hmm. which for those, you know, you and I have worked with a couple of advisors who are great because there really is nothing that sort of throws you. And yet at the same time, I don't like problems. Problems are to me a sign that the world isn't coherent mm -hmm. and that we haven't sorted it through really or thought it through. And so if you're not careful, and this is true for all strengths roles, it's the whole thing about like don't treat people the way you, or rather the golden rule says treat people as you would like to be treated. Well, I, if I was to treat people as they would like to be treated, then there wouldn't be any problems in the world. But there's a whole bunch of people that would come to me with problems because they actually get energy and juice and power from those mm -hmm. and feel that they're most on fire. And I can't treat them the way that I would like to be treated because that presupposes think, that. And that's what's so beautiful about having a language because if I knew this, if I was Taya, just graduating Cal Poly, and yeah. I took this assessment and I know that yeah. I'm an advisor, then I would choose roles or, or look at the world in terms of my career for roles that I am solving problems. So right. law or whatever that might be. And so we don't have that frame of, when you don't have that frame of reference, all of a sudden you might look like the drama queen or you might look like the person that's trying to create problems in your role because you're in a role that is, you know, problem deficient. Well, it's like one of my best friends is Miles, who is a, is a doctor, he's an anesthesiologist in England. And we were, I was interviewing for the book that I just wrote with Ashley Goodall called Nine Lies About Work. And we were interviewing him because he's a doctor who doesn't like sick people, which sounds really weird because he's an amazing doctor. But he loves hovering people between life and death, which is what an anesthesiologist, and in the UK we call an anesthetist, do. But, but he doesn't like sick people. So imagine if you go into a, the field of being a physician and, and you don't like solving problems. Let's say you're not an advisor. Well, every single day, there's just, you can fix oh, one, there's another one that lines up outside. You can have an entire career where your, your, your whole energy is drained out of you every day because you don't like the problem of a sick person coming into your office. No, and that's- And you can't turn your mind- How do you, I mean, it's, that's what blows me away that we don't, we don't focus on understanding that because no. you get into that career and you're like, why am I so dead? Why am I dead? Or you're now first lady like Olivia Pope and you're going, why am I dead? Because yeah. there's no problem to solve. Yeah. And it's, although it's interesting because you're Nikki, um, you know, 37 years a teacher 
And he was sort of ticked off. I saw one of his questions in the, yeah. in the Instagram live thing, because teacher, the actual strength role teacher for him was number uh, seven. I was kidding with him because I, I was saying that proves that he's a bad teacher because he isn't a bad teacher. Um, the strength role itself doesn't necessarily tell you what job you should have, but it will help you know what energy source you will get from that job and the way in which you'll manifest that job. Oh, so Nikki, yeah. he, he's opinionated. Totally. He's a great cook. He does what every advisor does. He makes recipes. Well, he loved and problem. He loved problem students. The problem students and yes. he's. I mean, God love him, but. He's got an opinion on everything. Mm -hmm. Now it's a super informed opinion, but he leads with that, which I'm sure many kids lean into because mm -hmm. they want that kind of certainty. But it's also, it's funny, isn't it? He's not just a good cook. He'll write the recipes out because there's a way to do this. Oh gosh, yes. Like why, why is he doing that? Why is there stacks of recipes written by, you know, Nikki Nez? Why? Because he's like, well, you should. Everything is, you should, you should, yeah. you should. Like those, that's what a conversation sounds like. Right. But, but I trust him. With love, right? So the people always say, what's the dark side of all these strengths? Well, the dark side of advisor is that you think you know the best thing to do better than anyone. Or the dark side of advisor, a la Olivia Pope, is that you will let various associations and loyalties fall by the wayside because there's a better way to do it. To, do it, to move forward. To move forward. And so then people go, well, what do you stand for? But it's weird Which is what she was struggling with in season four. But you trust, people trust you because they understand that you're, you know, you, you do turn to the experts and you make really methodical decisions. It's not like, hey, this sounds like a fun way to go. Let's do this. Yeah, no, the thing that, so the, 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 the reason why we turn to, if you are an advisor, the reason why we turn to you is as like, exactly as my show was saying, because we know that there are no hidden agendas with you at your best, no hidden agendas at all. You will say it the way you see it and you will make a determination on the best thing to do on all of the available facts. And boy, for the people on your team or the people in your family, what an amazing um, gift of certainty that is. There's no like, there's not, nothing under the surface like good old Nick, Nicky is like, he's straight. Well, like you don't you, worry about those hidden things. You, they're just going to make a decision around the best thing to do. With advisors, do you, would you say that they always, I shouldn't say always, that's stupid, but would, do they like to be seen as the expert? Do they, yes. Is that something that's important to them? Because I think it's interesting to as we want, like I would want to understand advisors through that. Like what's really important to them? And I know that's really super unique to each individual, but just in general, yes. they if you value are, expertise. If so. you are living with an advisor, if you have an advisor on your team, for them to know that they are the expert and are seen as an expert is very important. They're proud of the details that they know. I go back to Nikki, I'm, you know, he wants you to know in the best way what he's read. He will share it with you. He will tell you what it suggests that you do. He will write the recipes for all the stuff that he makes because he, he wants to show you that he knows his thing. Mm. If you want to hurt him, mm. then you undermine his expertise. Although it's an interesting thing about advisors. They also have something that is called expertise orientation. It's a very entrepreneurial uh, strength as it happens. Expertise orientation means I will be deliberately searching out experts in a bunch of different fields and bringing their input into my world. And I'm not threatened by it at all. It's the beautiful thing about advisors. I'm generalizing, of course, but a basic approach that the advisor has to the world is any new expertise is valuable. Now, I want to be seen as an expert because I know the details and I'm looking at the world as it is and you need to listen to me. That's why I'm sort of opinionated. Mm -hmm. But they're not undermined when somebody comes in and goes, I'm a legit expert. And you'll go, ooh, I'll bring you in, thank you very much. No, like, there's no insecurity. The beautiful thing about, if you're an advisor, you may not even know this, but you don't come across as insecure. Mm -hmm. You come across, Olivia Pope is not insecure. Mm -hmm. She's never defensive. Mm -mm. The beautiful thing about advisors is you aren't. You're just like, okay. No new intel can undermine the foundations of your world because the foundations of your world are that you gotta look at the world. So nothing new, oh, it's new information. Okay, well, bring that in. That's mm -hmm. like fuel. Um, 
I wish that was always true for all of us, but advisors, you have that expertise orientation. It's a beautiful thing. Does that mean thing. that they're judgmental? Do they? No. It doesn't. No. So going, you're not an expert, so you're not. Oh. That well, level. So that's, in so that's interesting. Um, Michelle just asked, does that mean that advisors are judgmental? Um, you're not good enough. And you're not. It, it, it's, they're evaluative. Mm. So an expertise orientation, the first question that you have that you sniff around with is, are you a real one? Mm. No, seriously, are you a real one? So this whole world we live in right now where we just listen to everything because anyone can make anything. So how do you know who's a real one? Mm -hmm. If you listen from now on, and if you go all the way through this thing we're making here, from now on, listen, and you'll see how many sentences that that uh, begun online or in presentations begin with the words, I think, or even, oh, I think. Or even they don't. It's, they're popping but, on, they have a platform there. And there's no barrier to the creation of that platform. Mm -hmm. The advisor is the person who's skeptical mm -hmm. in the same way. Olivia Pope is skeptical going, really? Mm. Are you really an expert in this? So they're not judgmental. If you're an advisor, you're evaluative. And you'll go, like, you'll go, you're not real, which can be hard to, you can be intimidating. We should actually do a thing where it's like each strength role can be intimidating in certain ways. Advisors are intimidating in the sense that a person who's got um, very little real backing for their expertise, advisors will sniff it out in three questions in the same way that frankly, Nikki, you'd come in and you try and do your thing with them Three questions in, he's going to be like, now he may be polite about it, but he'll come away and go, you're not real. Mm -hmm. You're not real. It's not, I don't think it's, it's not judgment. It's, it's evaluation. It's, it's cool. Yeah, it's a good distinction. Well, I think I want to be an advisor. Well, if you work really hard, I can. you can be an advisor too. Um, one quick thing for those of you with kids, and I said this, I said this on Friday. We are gonna do a standout student in, in October. If you have an advisor kid, and we should probably do this for every strength role as well, how does the kid learn? Um, how do advisors learn? Advisors learn on the job, in the world, in the deciding. It's so important. Don't give me a fake project. Even kids, but uh, oh, the person on the team, right. Like, don't give me a, and don't make me read the darn instruct. Don't make me read uh, some theory about it. Don't make me try to copy someone else. Other strengths roles actually learn by copying, but not advisors. Advisors are like, give me a real situation and help me figure out what the real situation stakes are, and then leave me alone because I'm going to work out what we should do. In fact, that's my. I love that. Okay, I'm going to ask one more thing. Okay, one more question. Um, advisors, I feel like as I read about all nine strengths roles, you would go, okay, most CEOs are advisors, or, right? You kind of generalize that way? Yes, and so, some folks ask that question, like, are, what, what, what are the leadership ones? I remember when we did Strength Planner, people would get on the black market, I'll trade you one strategic for two ideations. The truth of the matter is, if you take a, a study group of really, really effective leaders and you give them standout, what you find is variety. I've done this, I don't know, 200 times. Uh, my colleague, Dr. Mary Hayes, um, who built standout with me, has done it even more than that. You run the data on highly effective leadership groups and what you find is variation. You find Richard Branson, but you also find Warren Buffett. You do. You find, look at American presidents. You could just go from American presidents on and each one, for every Abraham Lincoln, there's a Teddy Roosevelt. Well, I'm sorry, they'll put Abraham Lincoln and Teddy Roosevelt together. Does anyone think they had the same, if they were around to take standard, they'd have the same standard results? No, they wouldn't. Would we follow them nonetheless? Of course we did. So, and we could get on and talk about this another time, but, but the strengths roles themselves don't confer anything on you. Mm -hmm. I don't mean just level. I mean even goodness. Strengths are value neutral. What we're identifying in standout 
are predispositions of recurring patterns that are non-gender related, non-race related, non-religion, nationality related, non-intelligence level related. So you can use them really badly mm -hmm. or you can use them really well. And obviously the point in, in talking through stuff like this vis-a-vis -vis advisor in this case is that our hope would be that you step into advisor if you are one. Not like Michelle was saying that you then, if you don't aren't one, you try to be one because it's the leadership you want because it isn't but that you know which ones you have, in this case advisor, and you step into it with intelligence.